folks! I am Katya with Lunar Sun Creations and today we are going to begin working on a simple 8x8 mini album. Uh, I am going to be using the paper collection Aesop's Fables by Chow Bella. You can use any paper collection you desire for uh, this tutorial. There are a few specific um, things that I'm doing in the album that are designed around this paper collection. However, you don't have to do these specific elements or you can adapt them to a different paper collection. Um, but just so you know, that's what I'm using. If you'd like to see the full walkthrough of this album before you start creating it, then I will link that down below and you can go check that out first. All right, but without further ado, let's get started on uh, what we'll need material-wise. So obviously you will need whatever patterned paper you want. I'm gonna be using two eight by eight paper pads for this. And then you will need a paper trimmer, of course. Um, some score tape and or wet adhesive. I'm going to use these in conjunction. If you just have wet glue, that's what you'd like to use, go for it. Otherwise, you can just use um, uh, score tape. That is also fine, whichever way you want to go. Oh, I also... This is what I'll be using for the actual construction of the pages, etc., etc. Um... I will be using an ATG gun for adding the patterned paper to the album. Okay, if you don't have one of these, you can just use either one of those other options. Um, scissors, ruler, um, some magnets. I did not count how many magnets we need. It's not a lot, uh, maybe like 10 sets, so maybe 20 magnets. Something like that. Um, there's lots of ways you can close things without adding magnets though, so if you don't want to use them, you certainly do not have to. Um, if you do uh, want to use them, um, I'm using one millimeter by 10 millimeter, very thin disc magnets. Um, I do have some in my Etsy shop, um, but you can find them all over the place online. Um, handy but not essential is a craft pick. I use this for um, taking the backing off the double-sided score tape. You'll need a um, pen. There's a couple places that we'll be needing to make some marks. So a pen or a pencil. Actually a pencil will be better. And then some uh, plain cardstock. I'm going to be using white. If you have black, use that. If you have craft, use that whatever you decide. Um, I'm using mostly eight and a half by 11. Um, I think it was about 25 sheets of eight and a half by 11, but you will need a couple pieces of 12 by 12. Um, so there was a couple pieces that were uh, longer than 11. So, so a couple pieces of 12 by 12. And then your scoreboard with um, a bone folder and scoring tool. You will need a couple brads and um, um, optional Distress Ink and an ink blender. Um, I tend to like the look of uh, the edges of my pattern paper being inked up a little bit, just so it kind of looks a little bit more vintage. You don't have to do that. That's totally a personal choice. Completely up to you. Um, you will need a couple of chipboard for the cover. Highly recommended, but not absolutely uh, absolutely essential, is a Tyvek envelope. You can find Tyvek online. You can find it in most major office supply stores. Um, sometimes even the post office has Tyvek envelopes. So look around. It might be um, more common than you think. All right, so that is everything you will need to create the album. So I'm going to clear all this away and get myself organized and we can actually start creating it. Okay. Okay, so to begin, you are going to cut eight pieces of cardstock that measure eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters. 
Okay, so eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters, eight of them. Okay, and then we are going to grab our scoreboard. And we're going to score each of those at half on the eight and three quarter inch side. Okay, easy peasy. Step one, check. All right, now we are going to take these in sets of two. So you've got the half inch score line right there. And now for anyone who's really new to um, mini album making, paper crafting, when you score something, it creates an indent. Um, and then on the back, there's a raised edge. You can't really see this very well. There's the raised edge and there is the indent, okay? So we always want to fold away from the indent. So never fold in, the, never fold the indent in on itself. Always fold away from it. Unless otherwise specified. There might be the odd time where there's a specific reason that I might do it, but 99% of the time we are going to be folding away from the indent. So I'm going to add some double-sided adhesive on the valley side, so that indented side, to every single one of these. I hope the white is going to show up okay. I hope you're going to be able to see the score lines and stuff. I very, I almost always use black, but for some reason I just felt like this album called for white paper. So I hope nothing is difficult to see for you. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Missouri is just joined the party. Oh, no, no, don't stand on the wet paint, bud. No, bu 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 bu. <laughs> have, have other projects drying on the floor and Zuri is famous for wet paint prints all the way through the house. Now that I have score tape on all of those, I'm going to miter the corners. So I'm just where the score line is at the end of the page. I'm just going to cut at an angle. And this just creates a cleaner fold when we fold it back. This part, when we fold this back, sometimes this little bit just kind of sticks out and you can like see it a little bit. And if you cut it, you can't see it. So it just a, uh, just for aesthetics. What are you doing over there? I feel like you're getting into something. Okay, so let's get these out of the way. Okay, now we are going to fold and crease all of these. We're going to get our bone folder. If I don't do this throughout this whole process, um, I'm really bad for forgetting to use my bone folder to um, go along the score lines. You feel free to yell at me. I won't hear you, but it might entertain someone else in the room with you that you're yelling at the TV screen. <laughs> Um, so, yes, but try to remember to fold and crease the score lines with your bone folder. Okay, so once everything is creased, we're going to take two of them and we're going to put them together like this so they create like a hollow tube. So. The score tape will be on the left side of one, the right side of the other, and we're going to like smush them together. I am going to use wet adhesive on this as well. So the reason that I use both is that the, um, the double-sided tape, the score tape, it um, makes it so that things will uh, stay put right away. Um, but over time, I find that the adhesion kind of fails and things come apart. Whereas the wet adhesive will stand the, the test of time, 
but it takes quite a while to dry. So I like the fact that if you use them together, the wet adhesive gives you, sometimes it'll, you can actually move things just a little bit if you've got it in the wrong place. Um, but you don't have to wait for it to dry. Like nothing is going to move now because you've got that, the, the wet adhesive, right? Or sorry, you've got the score tape. If you just had wet adhesive, this would be moving all over the place and you'd have to like hold it and hold it and hold it until it dries. I'm way too impatient for that. That, that ain't my, that ain't my jam. <laughs> Patience, not my thing. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's one. There is one base page. So let's do that three more times. Now you can lay these flat, you can stand them up, whichever way um, is easiest for you to do it. Whatever makes most sense for you. Okay, so now I've got um, four base pages that are hollow like that. Okay, uh, now we are going to cut three pieces that are two inches wide by eight and a quarter inches long. Okay, so cut three of those, two inches by eight and a quarter. We are going to score each of those at five eighths, seven eighths, one and an eighth, and one and three eighths, all on the two inch side. So it's going to create these little gussets. Okay, you see that there? So we're going to do that for all three pieces. So five eighths, seven eighths, one and an eighth, one and three eighths. Okay, while we have our scoreboard out, I'm gonna get you to cut two pieces that are three inches by eight and a quarter. I'll let you cut those out and I'll wait for you. <laughs> and then we are going to score them at three and a quarter inches on the three inch side. Okay, now we can put our scoreboard away for a while. Okay, so we're gonna add score tape to um, either side of those score lines. So we don't want it to touch the score lines, but we want it to be on this half inch section and this half inch section on both sides, both the mountain and the valley side. Okay, on each of those pieces. Once we've got these three pieces, all with a score tape on both sides, we're going to use our bone folder and score all of these score lines. Okay, so these are going to go in between our pages. So one is gonna slide into one page. We're gonna miter them still. So it's gonna slide in there and then this one's gonna slide into the next page. And so these are going to like hold your pages together. 
Now I'm going to do one optional step. You don't have to do this, but um, I just like to make things as strong as possible wherever I can. So I'm going to cut a couple of strips of Tyvek. So I want them to be about one and a half inches across. By eight and a quarter long. Okay, so on the rounded part, like the back side, I'm going to remove the tape backing. Add a little bit of wet adhesive. And then put the black side, the dark side of the tie back down. And then I'm gonna uh, re-add our, the score tape. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do this. This is just kind of a precautionary, want this to live for many, 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 many years to come. So I'm doing everything I can to make sure that that happens. This is Tyvek, it can't, you can cut it, but you can't rip it. So, um, these pages will never rip apart from each other if this Tyvek is here. They're, they're uh, set for life. They're buddies, buddies forever. <laughs> and it's okay if it doesn't make it all the way to the edges. <clears throat> like, as long as it covers the score lines, like, that's the part that would be weaker and, and rip. So as long as it covers that part, then we're good to go. Okay, now we're going to attach the pages together. So, two pages like this. Oh, we still have to miter the corners, sorry. One more thing. Like we did with those first bits, we're going to miter the corners just up to the score line. Like that. If you've got any Tyvek sticking out like I do, then trim that off. Okay, get rid of those bits. Okay, so now we can remove the score tape one, one bit. And we'll put it against this inner wall of our page. Just up to that first score line. Okay, so it's still open. This is where we adhered it. Just up to that first score line. Okay. And now this one is going to adhere to the next page.
And then the next one is going to slide into the other side of this. So you've got, we've already got one side adhered here. So now we're going to adhere something to this side. And then these two bits of score tape are going to adhere together. I guess we could put them together before we put them into the hinges. I guess either way works. <laughs> Okay, so left inner part of the next hinge is going into one of the pages that already has uh, that already has one in it. Hope that makes sense. Okay, do you see what's happening here? So now we've got these two that both just have some score tape, and now we can take the score tape off and let them adhere together. Okay, and then just push, push those together. Now that one is salad. Okay, we've got another one, this last one here. So we've got the center one is attached on this side. Now we're going to attach the next one, the inside, to here. Okay? The same with the other one. This is the first one here. So this is the edge of the page and it's flush with it. Now we're going to do the same with this one here. It is going to be flush with the edge of the back page. Okay, so now you've got something that looks like that. So we're not going to do it yet, but eventually these will kind of overlap each other. And curve. So it's gonna form, you know how like a regular book has like a curved spine that the pages don't attach exactly, like don't attach to, it looks like that. So that's what we're going to do. These are going to overlap and curve so that we've got a nice curved spine. But we're not going to adhere those yet. We're gonna wait until we're working on our cover to do that. So right now, just let them be. And now, um, we can set that aside for just a second and we will cut our pages, our pieces for page one. Okay, so the pieces we need for page one are as follows. Uh, two A pieces, they measure seven inches by eight and a quarter. Okay, so seven by eight and a quarter. You need two of them. Then we need a B piece that is five inches by seven. And then your C piece is five and a half by eight and a quarter. 
Okay, so those are what you need for page one. Now get your uh, scoreboard. The A pieces, we are going to score at half on the seven inch side. Okay, the B piece, we're going to score at half on the seven inch side again. And the C piece, we are going to score at half on the five and a half inch side. Okay, so that's all the scoring for page one. Now we'll add our score tape to all the half inch sections. And then we'll miter the corners and then we'll put them on our page. Fold and crease. Okay, so we are going to take our two A pieces. One will adhere to the left side and one will adhere to the right. Okay, so those are your A's. Now we are going to adhere your B piece to the top of the C, just like that. But you want the C piece, you want the adhesive part, the half inch section, to be on the right hand side. And then adhere the B part to the top of it. Okay, and now we can adhere the C on. Okay, and the C is going to adhere onto the left. You want the left B, or sorry, the left A to be on top. And you want these this edge of the BC to be aligned with this edge of the base. And adhere it down. Okay, so you've got this that opens up and to the side, and then this opens to the side, and this opens to the side. Okay, and then we're going to have some swing tabs or some kind of magnetic closure there. And then we'll probably also have a magnetic closure here. I'm going to kind of figure that out as we add our patterned paper. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for a second and we are going to get our uh, pieces cut for page two. So first we have got, uh, for page two, two pieces that are four and five eighths wide by eight and a quarter inches long. Two of those. We've got a piece that is four and a quarter by 12. This is that one, this is one of those places where the 12 inch pieces of paper come in, well, you need them. <laughs> they don't just come in handy, you, you need a 12 by 12 inch piece, piece of paper. Um, and PC is 12 by four and three quarters. And then your D piece is just one inch 
by four and three quarters. Just a little piece. This is going to be used as a hinge. Okay, so grab your scoreboard. And starting with the A piece, we are going to score it at half on the four and five eighths inch side. Okay, your B piece is going to be scored on the 12 inch side. We're going to score at half, six and a quarter. Okay, so half, six and a quarter. Then we're going to flip the piece over. The score lines are still at the same spots. That half and six and a quarter are still at the same spots, but now we're showing the mountain side. And we are going to score again at three and three eighths and nine and one eighth. Okay, I've flipped it over because I want to make an accordion fold. So I want this valley fold to score, I want to fold away from its indent. Same with this one and same with this one. I'm folding into a, uh, an accordion, which means because the folds are going different directions, the score lines need to be on the opposite side. Okay. Um, for the 12 inch by your, your C piece, we are going to score at four inches on the 12 inch side. And then again, we're going to flip it over and we're going to score at eight. Okay, so that is again going to kind of fold in an accordion, full different directions. The D piece, we are going to score at half on the one inch side, and it is going to be a little hinge. Okay, now let's add some score tape. We are going to add onto the valley side, we're going to add it to our D hinge, making sure to leave a gap between the uh, score line and the score tape itself. Focus, focus. Really? There we go. <laughs> Can you see that? I hope so. Um, the C piece does not require any score tape. There are no half inch score lines. The B piece, we do have one half inch score line right at the end. And we do also on the A pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to miter these corners. On the D piece, I'm going to fold it a little hinge and miter it this way. So it looks like that. Okay, get these out of the way. Bring your album back in, flip it over to page two. Now, these can be, uh, each page is gonna have a large pocket. Um, if you want, you can close that. You don't have to have it there, but I just wanted to give you the option. All right, so, um, oh, we still need to crease and fold these. Fold and crease them. Okay, so this is what your C piece looks like. And your A pieces are going to go once again on the left and the right side of the base page and they're going to meet in the middle. Okay, so they're gatefold like that, and 
your B piece, this little guy here, this little accordion. He is going to adhere to the top right corner of the right A piece. So my plan for this is to use one of the one of these little guys. Okay, one of these cut aparts I'm going to put on the front here. So if you are not using this paper collection and you don't have any little cut aparts that are this size, then you don't have to add this piece. You, you just, just keep it a, a gatefold and ignore this part of it. Or you could make this um, accordion part a little bigger if you desire. Okay, and then your D piece, we're going to attach the hinge onto the back of the D. Okay, so I want it so the opening is um, on the right side at the top and it's on the left side at the bottom. Okay, and we're going to put this hinge on so that the opening of the hinge is attached to the back left edge of the B. I'm just going to flip it over just because it's easier for me to see it. Okay, and then we can remove the rest of the backing and it is going to go on the bottom left edge right down here. Okay, so it's opening like this. I've got the hinge right here and it's going down right over here. Okay, so we've got a piece that goes like that. We've got a piece that goes like that. And then these two pieces open. Okay. All right, so that's that. That's it for that one. Um, if you aren't using the paper collection and you want to add magnets now, you can do it wherever you like, really. Um, you can... You can have like a swing tab going around all of this and all of this. Um, you could have magnets from here to here and then from here to here as well. And then from here to here, like you can have like a whole line of them connecting all of this down. Um, there's a lot of options on ways that you can, you can do this whole scenario. Um, I'm hoping that you will follow me onto part two when I do it so you can see what I'm doing, but I just want to get all the construction done first.